Okay, so let's start today talking about uh, partial sums and series, okay? So a series or a sequence, sorry, a sequence is just a function whose domain is restricted to the set of counting numbers. So the first term, a1, would be what you get if you plug 1 into the function. The second term, a2, what you get if you plug 2 into the function. a3 is the third term, what you get if you plug in 3. All the way up to a n, a n is the nth term, and then you continue beyond that forever. So you have all these terms for your sequence. Well, what the sum is, or the series, is what you get when you add all these terms up. So we use this notation, that's the Greek letter sigma, capital sigma. Uh, it represents the sum. Um, and the things that we're summing up are a1, a2, a3, all the way up to a n and beyond, a n. So this is what a series is. You take the terms of the sequence and you add them all up. This is an infinite series. So here's how the notation works. You have your sigma, which means that you're looking at a sum. That's what all the plus signs are representing here. It's a sum. And then I'm going to tell you what to start the sum with, because this is it's implied here that the domain is a set of natural or counting numbers. Because here you tell where you want to start counting, i equals 1. And at top, the top you tell where you want to end the counting, at i equals infinity. So we're counting an infinite number of terms, and the terms all look like this. a, i, which are the terms of the sequence. i starts with 1 and goes all the way up to infinity. So this notation is like a condensed form of this sum here. It's saying I'm starting at 1 and going all the way up to infinity, adding up, that's what the sigma means, all these ai terms, a1, a2, a3, a4, all the way up to infinity. We just call this the series. We can call that s. So if you take the terms of a sequence and add up all the, uh, and add them all up, you get what's called the infinite series, all right? And if you stop this, if you truncate this, stop this just short, like let's say we have a1, a2, a3, all the way up to a n, but instead of going beyond a n, instead of going beyond a n, you just stop right there at a n. You don't add any more. Well, in that case, the notation would look like this. Sum from i equals 1 to n now, because we're stopping at n instead of going all the way into to infinity, of a i. And this would be called s n for the nth partial sum. So if you stop it at n, if it's, fi if, if it's a finite sum, you stop at n, then you call it the nth partial sum. So we have the nth partial sum. What we're going to discuss today is what happens when we deal with the nth, par nth partial sum of specifically the geometric sequence. So the geometric sequence looks like this. The first term is a1. The second term, you take a1 and you multiply it by a common ratio to get the second term. The third term is a1 multiplied by the common ratio squared. And then you would continue in that fashion until you get to a n, which is a1 multiplied by the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. And then, of course, you could continue all the way to infinity. All right, so that's called a geometric sequence. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the nth partial sum of a geometric sequence. Uh, so since we're dealing with the nth partial sum, we don't actually have to look at everything all the way out to infinity. We can truncate it and stop it right here at a n. This would be a n. So that's a 1, a 2, a 3, all the way up to a n. What I want to look at is the sum from i equals 1 to n of the ai's, which in this case are the sum from i equals 1 to n of a1 times r to the n minus 1. a1 times r to the n minus 1. Uh, that looks like this. That's equal to uh, a1 plus a1r plus 
A1R squared plus, plus A1R to the N minus 1 power. That's what the nth partial sum looks like for a geometric sequence. So we have this, Sn, the nth partial sum is A1 plus A1R plus A1R squared plus, plus A1R to the n minus 1 power. What I want to do is I want to take this and I want to multiply every term by R, multiply both left and right side. So if I want to find R multiplied by Sn, so this is Sn, I'm just going to multiply by R. Well, that means I'm going to have to distribute on the right-hand side. A1 would get multiplied by R. A1R would get multiplied by R, giving me A1R squared. A1R squared would be multiplied by R, giving me A1R to the third plus, plus A1R to the n minus 1 would get multiplied by R, making it A1R to the n. So I get Sn and I get R times Sn. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Sn and I'm going to subtract from it R multiplied by Sn. I'm going to do that subtraction. Well, that means I'm going to take this A1 plus A1R plus A1R squared plus, plus A1R to the n minus 1. And I'm going to subtract from it subtract from it these terms right here. So I'm subtracting A1R. I'm subtracting A1R squared. I'm subtracting A1R to the third. I'm subtracting all the way up to A1R to the nth power. So this is what I have now. I now have that Sn minus R times Sn is equal to, well, what happens? A1 stays. A1 is still there. A1R and minus A1R cancel each other out. A1R squared and minus A1R squared cancel each other out. The next term would be A1R cubed. Minus A1R cubed would cancel that out go all the way down, the term here would be A1R to the n minus 1. That's the term that comes before this one. Before this one is an A1R to the n minus 1. So it would cancel that one out. This one would remain minus A1R to the nth. <coughs> so on this side, I'm going to factor out the nth partial sum, 1 minus R. On this side, I'm going to factor out a1, 1 minus r to the n. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve for the nth partial sum by dividing both sides by 1 minus r. So dividing both sides by 1 minus r, we have sn is equal to a1 times 1 minus r to the nth power divided by 1 minus r. This is the formula for the nth term of a finite geometric sequence, okay? Here's the thing about it. As long as r is a proper fraction, as long as r is a proper fraction, as n goes to infinity, this term just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It diminishes to 0. So it turns out that if you take the limit as n approaches infinity of Sn, which is the limit as n approaches infinity of A1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r, as long as r absolute value is less than 1, then this limit is equal to A1 times 1 over 1 minus r because this term right here goes to 0. As long as r's absolute value is less than 1, this term just disappears, just goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So you just get this. So this is the sum of an infinite geometric sequence or geometric series. 
this is the sum of a finite or the partial sum, the nth partial sum of a finite geometric sequence or series. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at an example here involving these two formulas. So the first one was the nth partial sum, which I said was a1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. And the infinite series is a1 times 1 over 1 minus r. All right, so let's take a look at an example. Find the indicated sum. All right, let's say we have something like this for part A. Part A we'll have, let's see, let's try uh, 128, uh, 64, uh, 32, 16, uh, and I want to find the, uh, let's say, let's say I want to find the fourth or the fifth partial sum, the fifth partial sum. So that would only be one more term than this, but this is just an example, okay? The first thing, if you're trying to find S5, the fifth partial sum, well, what you want to see is you want to see what kind of sequence this is. And if you take consecutive terms here, 64 over 128 is 1 half. 32 over 64 is 1 half. 16 over 32 is 1 half. So since these ratios are all the same, the ratio of this term to the previous term, the ratio of this term to the previous term, this term to the previous term. Since all those ratios are the same, we call that the common ratio, R. Okay? And we're trying to find the fifth partial sum. So we're trying to find S5, the fifth partial sum. Well, the fifth partial sum, it says here is equal to A1. A1 is this right here. This is A1. So A1 is the number... 128. So I have the fifth partial sum, the fifth partial sum is equal to A1, which is 128, multiplied by 1 minus R. R is this number right here, 1 half. 1 half to the power of N, N is the number 5, all divided by 1 minus R which once again is 1 half. So let's see what happens here. We have 128 and 1 over 2 to the fifth power is, uh, let's see, 1 over 32. So this is 1 minus 1 over 32. All over 1 minus 1 half is just 1 half. All right, so when we do this subtraction, we get 128 multiplied by, this is going to be 31 over 32 because 1 is really 32 30 second, all divided by 1 half. We get this, and let's see, that's going to equal, we have 128 multiplied by, this is 31 over 32 divided by 1 half. And this is then going to be 128 multiplied by 31 over 32 times 2 over 1. These cancel, leaving a 16 down here. And let's see. Uh, so we get here, well, 16 actually goes into 128. Uh, eight times. So we get eight times 31, which is equal to, 
What's that? Uh, 248. So the nth partial sum, the fifth partial sum for this geometric sequence, the fifth partial sum is 248. All right. Now let's take a look at what happens when it is an infinite geometric sequence. So let's say we start off here uh, with this sequence. Let's see. We have All right, so let's say we have this sequence and we want to find the sum. So this one doesn't stop at n. We're not given a value for n. So here they want me to find the um, series. Uh, they want me to find this infinite sum. So they want me to add all the numbers up all the way up to infinity. Okay, well let's see. Um, let's make sure that it's geometric first by checking for a common ratio. The ratio here is 1 over 9 divided by 1 over 3. So 1 over 9 divided by 1 over 3 is 1 ninth multiplied by 3 over 1 or 1 third. So the ratio here is 1 third. Here, 1 over 27 divided by 1 over 3 is 1 over 27 multiplied by 3 over 1 or 3 over 27, which is also 1 third. So it's 1 third here. And actually, it turns out to be 1 third here. Since all these ratios are the same, this divided by that, this divided by that, this divided by that, we can assume that this is a geometric sequence with common ratio 1 third. All right, so since we have all of that then, if I want to find the sum, which is not a partial sum, but the sum of all the terms, the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of ai. If I want to find that sum, well, this is how I find that sum. I need to know a1. a1 is 1 third. And I multiply that by 1 over 1 minus r. And r is also 1 third. 1 third. So we get here that this is 1 third multiplied by 1 over 1 third, well this is 3 third minus 1 third, which is 2 thirds. So I get that this is equal to 1 third multiplied by 3 over 2. When you flip that one over, these cancel out, and we get that this sum is equal to 1 half. So if you add up all these numbers all the way up to infinity, they all add up to just 1 half.